Hello my band friends and welcome to the channel again. First I would like to start before we unbox this great pan with some updates. I'm home. I was in Italy for five days. I went into a trip to see some of my friends and I traveled to Rome, Florence and Naples and visited three pan companies and one which I did not film. Currently I'm working on editing all of the clips from the visit and I will keep you guys updated when I will posting them on my YouTube channel. So let's resign to the unboxing. We have a very special pen today. It's a Pinader. It's the latest pen from Pinader. Let's start with some company history. Pinader, it is a stationary company based in Florence, Italy, which does amazing stuff with paper and cards and envelopes. And they have two calligraphers, very talented one. And they also do all kinds of fancy stuff, like, for example, the papers which the Vatican use for correspondence and all intern stuff are made by Pineda. So let's move on with the pen. First, I would like to show you the box and how the pen is presented inside. Then we will take a better look closer and see everything that comes inside this box. So this is a white cardboard box. And if we open, we can see that inside lays a very interesting box. It is resembling leather, but it is not leather. And it is in a shape of an old vintage desk. If you can see the profile, you know what I mean. So if we open the box opens like this. And here we have the company logo Pinader. Here we have the pen and a nice feature of this. It's we get a sample of the envelopes and cards which I previously told you about that Pinader may, makes. If we look closer, we have here an instruction guide and also all the warranty and how to maintain the pen and everything that it's necessary to know about it. So let's see the pen. The one I went for, it's the yellow one and it is not the only one because I went for two and I bought a different nib on my other pen. We will be seeing that one in the close up. It's a very interesting design from um, the pen manufacturer Pineder, which recently hired the famous Dante del Vecchio from Visconti and this is the first pen that it they launched officially. So this is a very nice looking pen. It comes in a few colors like red, green, blue and black. And also there is a very special edition in clear material that is cut like a honeycomb and that it is not launched yet, but this one is. So let's take the camera into a close up and see the features of this pen. Let's take a better look inside the box of the Pineder Le Grande Bellezza. So this is the pen right here. Here we have on the warranty envelope that keeps everything inside. We have a very fine example of the products from the paper department of the Pineder company. Here we have embossed the name and the logo and Firenze 1774. Okay, let's move this aside. Also, here it's the entire package of products. They are offering samples inside every box. You can use this to write a thank you letter to someone or a happy birthday one maybe. And we have the pen right here. 
So let's close the box, move everything aside and take a better look at this pen. The pen is absolutely gorgeous. As you turn the pen, you can see the color varying from a very bright yellow to a little bit more darker yellow swirled with dark blue and black. If we close up, we can see the clip, which is a very interesting designed clip. It resembles a feather, which as far as I know, it is a very old writing instrument. So if we can take a better look over here, we have a cap, a ring cap, which here we have the logo of the company Pinader. And also here, I don't know if you can see this, we have a famous sentence, which is embossed in the material and the famous sentence, it's the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which is the thing that every fountain pen reviewer uses when it's re reviewing a writing instrument. This sentence uses every letter of the alphabet. So if we try to open it, we can see that the cap it's holded by magnets in place and you can see it over here but also a very nice feature of this system it's if you try to let's say screw in the polarization of the mag magnets change and allows you to open the pan this is very nice because gives the feeling of a screw but the threads are not there it's very very innovative and nice also here we have a metal section it is a rather thick one but it is ergonomically and very very comfortable in use i have this pen for i believe three days and i used it for longer sessions of writing and I didn't have any problems. If we open, we can see the cartridge converter filling mechanism and we can see that on the cartridge converter we have the company name Pinader embossed over there. As materials go, we have a very nice interesting material. This is uh, obtained by mixing some um, stone dust or marble dust with colors and resin and makes for a very interesting material. It has a little bit of weight, but it's very, very nice. So let's take a better look to the main attraction of this pen. And this one, it's the nib. The nib, it's made out of gold and it is a semi-flexible nib. I'm very hesitant to call it semi-flexible because many uh, people try to flex it so hard and get up to a very, very bad day because this thing, if you flex it, you will bend it. If you flex it like a vintage pen, you will most likely bend the nib and spring it. We have a set of cutouts inside over here. Let me show you. Here we have the nib cuts. They run along the nib. And from my understanding of nib geometry and after talking with Dante in Italy, I understood that the cuts help you with varying the point where the nib is flexing. So like this, you will always have the nib touching the feet and not interrupting the ink flow. But a very interesting thing is that I've heard Brian from Goulet talking about, it's the slit between the tines and let me show you what is this about as you can see on this one 
the cut runs from the tip of the nib right to the end of the breather hole. On, let's say, a stub from Pinader, which I have here, I told you I bought two. Let's put this aside and let's take the stub. This is the blue one and has a stub on it. Let's close up and see. So if you see the gap between the tines or the cut between the tines, do not runs to the breather hole, stops before, like two millimeters before it. So also this, as far as I can say, I think it helps with the hard starts being a flex nib and a stub once you press it on the paper let me show you just like this the tines will spread and you will have a hard starting nib but if the cut between the tines it's not reaching the breather hole the nib it's a little bit stiffer and will avoid the problem with the hard starts so this is the blue version the same everything is the same only this one it is a stub same filling mechanism cartridge converter only a different material i went with the blue because i like the blue a lot and now i think we have to do a writing sample and i have to show you these two nibs let's start the writing sample with the stub it's very hard for me to write in this position because i'm holding my hand between a tripod of the camera okay let's start this is the pine there la grande de this is my issue not the pen okay this is a stub nib the ink it's Hirozuku Ama Iro and let's kick the famous sentence the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so let's check the wetness It is not a gusher, but a very, very wet nib, as you can see. Also, we can see that the grind of this nib gives a natural line variation. You don't need to push it so much. You can obtain everything only by varying the angle. The nib doesn't scratch, doesn't have feedback. It doesn't have grinded the corners very sharp to affect anything and it's a joy to use. I think this one, it's a, one of my best stub nibs. Also, you can try to flex it, but I don't see the reason why. But if you flex it, for example, this is a normal line and this is a flex line. Not a lot of flex, but I don't see the reason behind using flex on a stub. Let me show you. If you only vary the angle, you have line variation from here to here. It's very hard for me to shoot this because of the angle. So the pen performs gorgeous. Doesn't skip, doesn't have any, any issue. So let's try the medium one. This is the Pinader La Grande Belleza A 
medium neb ink its diamine poppy red and the sentence the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog it's much easier to write with a medium in this angle than with a stub the wetness let's check that it is just a tiny bit drier than the previous stub nib let's try a double pass yeah i'll say it's on the wetter side so now let's the let's see the flexing this is how much i'm willing to push it before i spring it so this is the line variation here it is a little bit thicker this it's a little bit skinnier the pen it performs gorgeous no problems whatsoever and i can't wait to try some of the inks which i do not use inside a full demonstrator because of the filling system and i'm afraid to stain it so now let's move on and see my overall opinion on these two pens conclusions do i like this pens yes how much a lot which of these two is my favorite i think as color and nib it's this one the blue one i love the stop nib it's performing gorgeous and i think this one it's one of my best nibs as stubs also another great feature that i've seen while i was visiting them in Firenze was that every nib comes assembled inside the section from Bach and Dante will personally choose to test every pen that it is delivered so if you have this pen that means that at one point Dante picked it up and tested and if it wrote correctly he will mark it okay if not they are having two nibmeister inside their company which will adjust the nib to write perfectly then it will be checked again by dante himself also a nice feature of this model it's the clip i like the clip it's innovating and very very nice also let's move into some of the features that i think i they are not strong points of this pen first of all it is the metal section but this one it's that more of a personally cho personal choice because i do not like metal sections that much i prefer material ones another thing is that the section will add weight here and also make the pen less weighty in this at this end you can post it but here it's our second problem it will rattle and it's posting securely but it is moving all around the other one it's probably most likely to do with the engraving over here being not so very very visible i would like to have a more crisper line and everything but i think all of this are only my preference so to conclude thank you for watching this review i would like to see any feedback from it and if you have question about it please comment in the section below and also if you want to support me doing videos and content please subscribe to the youtube channel follow me on instagram and i will 
leave you guys the link to my Instagram channel into the description below. Thank you and bye-bye.